This driver's side radiator tank has a crack in it, as you see here. I could get that tank replaced at a radiator shop if I take them the radiator for $70. But I can get a lifetime warranty radiator for not much more, and I'm going to keep this truck for many more years, so that's the way I went. You can save your vehicle's memory, like the clock, for example, on radio stations, by feeding in 12 volts from another source, be it another battery or battery charger, fed in as the photo shows here. On my 97S10, I can use a 9-volt battery, but you will be disconnecting the battery. This new radiator comes with the two fittings for the transmission oil cooler, but does not come with the fittings for your engine oil cooler. This radiator drain petcock can be really aggravating to get to. You may just want to put a pan under it and disconnect your lower hose at the radiator. Drain all your coolant first before you remove the transmission oil cooler lines. By draining the coolant first, you won't get any transmission oil into your antifreeze. One way to remove oil or transmission fluid from antifreeze is to pour your contaminated antifreeze into a gallon jug, filling it all the way to the top. Wait a few minutes and the oil will rise to the very top of the gallon jug and you can either siphon it off or add a little bit more distilled water to let it overflow and eliminate the oil. You can also use a filter like a paint filter to filter your antifreeze before you put it back in. I do highly recommend using distilled water. That's what I've used in this S10 of mine, and there's no corrosion at all in this system, none. I've kept the Dex Cool changed at a, on a regular basis. Some people like the Dex Cool, some don't. I really like it in this GM vehicle. This radiator came with a little plastic tool shown here to remove the transmission cooler lines. You could remove the transmission cooler line fittings without disconnecting the cooler lines, but I don't advise doing that because you may damage the O-rings. You can see the three little ears on these snap rings that retain the transmission cooler line. And you can also see the black O-ring inside the fitting. To install the line, you just push it directly into the fitting until you hear a little snap. Use a light and a dental mirror to make sure that those ears on that clip are holding the cooler line and that the cooler line's all the way in. I actually found it easier to use this little pick to remove those snap rings rather than the tool. It just seems to work better. Just make sure you don't bend those snap rings in removing them. If you have trouble breaking these engine oil fittings loose from your oil radiator, here's a tip. I've been in this business all my life, so this might help you. I use my impact with the impact setting the lowest it will go or reduce your uh, air pressure. Let that impact wrench just barely wrap at that, and the, and the wrapping will break it loose better than trying to break it loose with a wrench. There isn't enough room to use a clamp on the radiator drain hose that goes here to the right of the drain petcock. You might use a piece of wire to retain it or some adhesive to retain it, but I also used a, a wire tie to strap it to one of my fender braces in case it came loose, I wouldn't lose it. And here is a brief description of that drain petcock. After you have disconnected and removed your battery, remove the three 10 millimeter screws at the top of the fan shroud. All four screws halfway down the fan shroud, two on the left, two on the right, 10 millimeter. If your truck has air conditioning, you'll have to move your air conditioning lines carefully away from the shroud and pull it out. The dust cap shown here just pulls off, snaps off. Pull it back out of the way. Then you can use the little provided plastic tool or the pick to remove the retaining ring. 
the engine oil cooler fittings remove in the same way that the transmission cooler fittings did. And it's easier to remove this box that holds your air filter. There's two grommets that just pull right off. And there's one 10 millimeter retaining nut. And these O-rings at the tip of this engine oil cooler fitting. That is a special O-ring, one that I didn't have, and I have hundreds of air conditioning O-rings. So if it's damaged, you'll have to get one. And here's a close-up view of that engine oil cooler fitting. This is a good time to remove any debris that you might have in front of your air conditioning condenser and behind it. And you can back flush it with a hose while you're there, if necessary. Just be sure when you're finished to make sure this air cleaner box screw is turned where it won't dig into your hose and cause a leak. So the installation of your new radiator will go just as a removal. Thanks for watching my videos and I hope this video really helped you in this installation.